This has been a shock to me all along. That's Scott Peterson, by the way. Talk about how different he looks, right? The guy's been sitting in prison. Um, he's a convicted baby killer. Killed his wife and their unborn baby, right? That's what the court said. He was sentenced to the death penalty. Now it was commuted to uh, life without possibility of parole. Let's bring in News Nation correspondent Laura Ingle. Okay, she's been covering this case from jump, okay? She moved to be able to be closer to Modesto so she could cover it. She was in that courtroom. All right. She's outside Mule Creek State Prison uh, in California. Uh, that's where that's where it is. Uh, so, Laura, it's great to have you. Thank you for staying on it. Give us your impressions. So yesterday we had this a very rare status conference hearing in the Scott Peterson case. And you're right. Many people are like, look, we thought this was a done deal. He's convicted. He's right here behind me. Mule Creek State Prison, life without possibility of parole. But the L.A. Innocent Project, as we know, working to get new evidence and all the evidence tested that they can in this case. We saw him over Zoom. So he was here at prison, zooming in to that conference. We saw him with his slick back hair. Didn't realize he had a ponytail until he turned to the side. So that was something new. Um, um, he was polite throughout the proceedings. And what was interesting about this case and this hearing is that the judge is now leaving that door open and not shutting down the LAIP, saying that she is going to put hearings on the court calendar for the Los Angeles Innocent Project to continue to work to get some of this evidence talked about, you know, not closing the door. And they're going to have more hearings about the evidence, about the DNA testing. And they say they have a list of witnesses who are very fearful of retaliation from the Modesto Police Department. And they want that list sealed by a court order. So that those are the hearings that are coming up April, May, July. That's in our future on that. Now, uh, there was something that stood out to you in terms of uh, what mattered about today. What was it? Yeah, well, we've got a couple of things. It's, you know, there's two main points here with the Innocence Project. It's the burned out orange van where we have that mattress that could have blood stains on it. And then there was the witnesses who swear that they saw Lacey Peterson after Scott Peterson went fishing. First, I want to tell you about Brian Spitelsky. He's that fire investigator who wrote about the van. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions we've always had is if you, you said that you tested it for blood, you said that it came up presumptive positive, you gave the Department of Justice a different sample of the mattress, they told him that it was negative. We don't have those reports. I talked to Brian Spitelsky this week over the phone. He allowed me to record the conversation. Here's some of what he said. Maybe that piece that was cut out didn't have blood on it and that's one of the things that bothered me over the years every time a documentary came on i had these questions i had this this band information and nobody was ever you know interested at that time of, of what what i had known all right so laura told me, me that he waited for days and go ahead yeah go ahead no 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 finish 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 I was just going to say, he's been waiting for years for somebody to call him. Now the L.A. Innocence Project is asking him about his investigation, and that's where we're at with that. He could have pushed the envelope a little bit himself, by the way. Uh, he didn't have to just wait for everybody to call him. But, you know, he's not part of the problem. He could be part of the solution, though. Let's bring in Mark Garagos, who was Scott Peterson's original attorney. Laura, stay with me because you may see it better than I do. Um, Mark, thank you, brother. Appreciate you being here. Um, I don't understand. I see this as potential... Uh, did the investigation happen the right way? Did they do the right kind of um, uh, searching? This wasn't evidence that they rejected. They just didn't even have it. How does that become the defense claim that they can prove it wasn't Scott Peterson? Well, look, the one of the things that I think that I hadn't realized this, Scott himself, without a lawyer, filed a habeas petition in the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal then put that habeas petition on pause to give the Innocence Project six months to proceed here and investigate this. So the Court of Appeal actually thought that what the Innocence Project had was good enough to give them some time to explore. It, at the hearing, when I watched part of it yesterday, the trial judge denied the request or it kind of truncated the request by Dave Harris for more time. Dave Harris was the right. trial lawyer at the time opposing counsel. Now, what they are alleging is that they sat on this. Now, 
you would say, well, if he had it presumptive of blood, DOJ said negative for blood. He's absolutely right. The, the fire investigator is. That could just mean that the portion or the, the sample that they got was negative for blood, number one. Number two, if they still have it, there are now techniques that were not available back then. Remember, in right. this case, Laura may remember, we spent days <clears throat> getting mitochondrial and DNA evidence admitted because it had never been admitted at the time in California. So there is a lot here. Stuff should have been turned over. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.